stand with loyalty. May we together follow Christ and Master and know the blessing of his sovereignty. Father, in gratitude for our homes and loved ones, we open now our hearts to all mankind. Grant us your spirit and love for one another. So, in your name, may we, may we, may we, our people God find. Let's pray. Our Father and our God who art in heaven, we are before you on this very beautiful Sabbath morning. We pray for your presence on this great day, the day that you blessed, the day that you set aside for us to rest. Our God, we pray for your presence as we worship you on this family life day, our God. We know the devil is not happy with the family attacking us from all colors, but we pray for your strength and for victory. We ask all these in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. I want to take this uh, opportunity to just welcome each and every one of you who has come to worship with us on this morning. And uh, before we continue, just want to ask if we have any first time visitors here today. Any first time visitors? Yes, my brother. Yes, Tara. Let me welcome you. Yeah. Yes, there's another brother at the back there. So just continue standing because we want to get a mic to you. Uh, not to. We have some gifts here for you. At the same time, we just want to tell us your name and uh, maybe where you come from. Hi, happy yes. Sabbath. I am Elmer Patubu from Antlers, the Seventh-day Adventist, Oklahoma. Amen, amen. And there's one at the back there. I'm Brother Cephas. I come from Princeton. I'm the pastor's guest and Brother Jacob's guest. Amen. 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 Praise God. Sister Rona, we are waiting for you. Give Sister Rona the mic. We welcome you, we welcome you. Sister Rona and Sister, Sister Toko, give them the mic, both of both, both, both the mics. Yes. We welcome you, we welcome you. to study God's Word to sing and pray with us today, you are invited to stay for a vegetarian fellowship lunch right after the worship service on the first and third Sabbaths of the month. That means that today you get to stay and eat with us and enjoy a very delicious meal. We have Zoom Bible studies happening. Would you or someone you know desire to receive Bible studies through Zoom to increase your knowledge about the truth and God's plans for your life? 
Pastor Wallace is now offering a series of Bible studies called Teachings of Jesus. This completely online study will teach you the fundamental beliefs of faith. Please call or text today to schedule your first study at 480-453-2235. We have a family life program happening today. You are invited for this very important seminar presented by the Family Ministry Department of the Church. The topic is a very important one. It's called Taming the Social Media Beast, Tips for Achieving Balance. The program will take place immediately after public, so make sure that you stay with us. There is also a new sermon series happening now. Pastor Wallace will continue the study on the Three Angels message next Sabbath, February 24th. Make sure that you invite your family and friends to join us to this amazing Bible study. The international camporee tickets are now sold out, but our club is currently on the waiting list for tickets. Currently, we are looking into renting a campsite near the location and purchasing day passes to attend the camporee. For more information regarding this, please see Sister Emmy or Elder Mike. The Investiture Achievement Class is happening on the 17th of this month. Pathfinder Sunday is happening on the 18th. The location is still to be determined. And we also have Youth Weekend happening next weekend starting Friday night with the Vespers for the Youth from 7 p.m. to 8.30 p.m. And then Saturday night with a social with food sale for the whole church, for everyone, at 6 p.m. So come and fellowship with your dear brothers and sisters and enjoy some delicious haystacks. The Book of Daniel Bible Study is also available for everyone. So join us for this study and discussion of the Book of Daniel on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. via Zoom. If you don't have the Zoom link yet, you can send a text message to 480 453-2235 and we will gladly provide it to you. On behalf of the communication department, we thank you for watching us and we hope that you find yourself at home as we praise the Lord together. Amen. At this time, I'm going to invite uh, our church clerk. We have some second readings uh, that uh, we need to take a vote on today. Sabbath. Uh, we have a few uh, members that the board have proposed uh, to represent to you and the first reading was done in January 27. So today will be the second reading. Uh, we have Johnny uh, Mengistu uh, for Men Ministry. He's a new member. He was baptized a few uh, weeks ago. We have Sister Toko Sibenda as a deaconess. We have Sister Laura Olivares and Lina Kemonto as community service assistants. If you are here, can you please rise up so that other members of the church can know you? Sister Laura, just rise up please. Sister Toko. Uh, Sister Kemonto, is she around? Okay, she must be with a baby or something. John, John is not here today. So, uh, being the second reading, we are going to take a vote. So, Megisto is the assistant director for Men's Ministries. Sister Toko is, a, is a, one of the deaconesses. Sister uh, Laura is one of the leaders in our community service, co director, as well as Sister Kemuto. 
So do I have a motion to support those positions? I have a motion for Sister Kitsubanda, and I have a second for my wife over there. Is there any question or any concern? So those in favor, just say aye. Those who oppose, same sign. Okay, the vote passed. Thank you so much. Okay, we are now going to ask you to, rise, before you rise up, we have, uh, remember we have potluck after the service today. You are all welcome to remain behind. After potluck, we have the Family Life Ministry is still going to present us a, a, a very nice, well-organized program in this afternoon. So please, after potluck, just stay behind. And remember, family life is not only for married couples. Family life is for the family. Okay? You are welcome. Let's rise up for our opening game.
somebody. It's time for prayers. And we know we live in this world, it's full of challenges. And our fight is not a physical fight, it's the spiritual fight. Ellen White says, if our eyes would be open and we see what is going around us, we will not be safe even one minute without prayers. Whatever is happening today, when we came to church, we didn't see what was going to happen. But the devil is at work. He's not asleep. He wants to bring confusion in his house so that the fellowship may not have a meaning. But we thank God because he gives us victory whenever we are weak. We thank God because he's going to lift us whenever we are low. And at this time, we know again it's time, today is the day for family life. Many marriages have been attacked, many families. People are crying, there is no unity because the devil is fighting. And it's so unfortunate, again, when we are here to, to celebrate and learn more about the family life, the devil is not asleep. So let's go before God. I urge you, every one of you, to pray silently. Pray for your family. Pray for the church family as the, um, the praise team lead us with a song before we pray. this morning, Lord. We are full of praises, Father, because you've been with us the whole week. You've blessed us with good life. You've fed us, Lord. You've kept us warm. We are healthy, and this day, you've, it has pleased you, Lord, that we come to your house of fellowship, Lord. We know there are other people who wanted to be here. Unfortunately, they didn't make it, Lord. But for us who are privileged, we raise our voices and give praises to you, O oh Lord. This morning, Father, 
I want to commit each and every family that has been represented in this house, Lord. And also remembering our online viewers and our church members who are not here today. That Lord, each family, may you visit them. May you meet them at their points of needs, Lord. Grant them according to your will. Hear their prayers and their pleas, Lord. Be ever present for them whenever they need you, O oh Lord. At this time also, we do bring our Makinic church as a whole before you, Lord. You know the temptation that the devil brings, Lord. You know how the Sabbath has been this day, O oh Lord. But we pray that as we leave this place today, may your blessings, whatever you wanted us to get, let us get it and let, us, let it have a place in our lives, O oh Lord. How we pray, Father, that you may give us peace as the preacher is going to stand and give us your word, Lord. We pray for him that, Lord, you may touch his lips, that whatever is going to utter may not come from him, but from you, O oh Lord. We know, Father, that we are just but your mouthpiece, but the words that you are going to give each and every one of us is from you, Lord. Open our hearts in reverence. Let us come before you, Lord. Let us hear your voice and let us make a decision to, to love you and to serve you in totality, Lord. I pray if there is any sin that we've sinned against you, Lord, we ask and plead that you may forgive us, Lord. May you take away our iniquities, Lord, and in place of it, Lord, give us peace and remember us in your second coming. Father, we cannot forget the youth of this church. They are our pillars, Lord. We pray for their blessings. We pray for the challenges that they are going through. We pray for their education, Lord. We pray that, Father, you may lift them up and give them strength, Lord. Our children, Father, we place before you and every hands, Lord. Despite the fact that they are young, let them know that there is God in heaven. Who hears their prayers, even if they are weak, they know they can still come to you, O oh Father. Lord, we pray even for our visitors who have come to this house today. That you may bless them, Lord. The decision that they made to come here is not easy. But Father, it has pleased you. And for a purpose, you, bring, you brought them the to this church today, Lord. May whatever thing that is going to be uttered, may it be a blessing to them so that whenever they live here, they will say, surely we've seen the hand of God leading. We thank you, Father, because we know that you've heard our prayers and you will continually answer them in Jesus' name. Amen. Some people argue that they do not return tithes and offerings because they cannot agree with how the church uses its resources and because, according to their perception, there is no transparency regarding the use of church funds. But how should we act when we disagree with the way we feel things are being conducted in the church? This question is so important that there is a special instruction from Ellen G. White about how we should proceed. She says, some have been dissatisfied and have said, I will not longer pay my tithe, for I have no confidence in the way things are managed at the heart of the work. But will you rob God because you think the management of the work is not right? 
make your complaint plainly and openly in the right spirit to the proper ones. Send in your petitions for things to be adjusted and set in order, but do not withdraw from the work of God and prove unfaithful because others are not doing right. This quote teaches us three key points. One, when we choose to be unfaithful because, in our perception, church leaders are not managing the resources properly, we are robbing God. Two, following Matthew 18, 15 to 17, we are advised to present our inquiries to competent persons who manage God's church. We should not follow the aggressive, hostile, and subversive spirit of our age that believes that broad exposure is the only way to solve problems. Three, we must present our concerns in a proper Christian spirit, asking God to put love in our words and give us wisdom and humility as we submit our questions. Give the benefit of the doubt. After all, we do not always have the whole picture of what is really happening. We are invited to act as someone who wants to help and not destroy. The quote concludes by stating, but do not withdraw from the work of God and prove unfaithful because others are not doing right. We cannot excuse our own mistakes before God based on others' perceived or real errors. The main message from this quotation is, do not withdraw from the work of God. He has work to do on this earth and invites you to join him. Maybe you have lost confidence in how God's work has been carried out. If that is the case, you are invited to pray right now and ask God for wisdom to act according to prophetic guidance. But especially, stay involved with the cause of truth through personal efforts and by returning to God your tithes and promise, which is your regular and systematic offering. May we put our desires last and God first.
We have a small group today, but a powerful group. Right, kids? I want to read a verse for you. Can you read it with me? Can you repeat after me? It says, it's from Psalm 139, verse 14. It says, I will praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are your works, and that my soul knows very well. I know something exciting. Someone has a birthday today. You know who it is? I tell you the truth. I couldn't point it out either. But everyone has a birthday Sunday, right? Someone had one yesterday, someone has one today, someone has one tomorrow. Do you all have birthdays? When's your birthday? July 3rd. You know what's crazy? My birthday is July 2nd. So we're right next to each other. So happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to everyone. Everyone has a birthday, whether you're small, tall, young, or old. Most people think their birthday is extraordinary, and we usually celebrate with cake and sometimes balloons. Your birthday is important. My birthday is important. Our birthday is important because it celebrates the day that we were born. It is the day of your birth. That's why we say birth day. The Bible tells us in Psalms that we are fearfully and wonderfully made. Do you know what that means? It means that God, the creator of the universe, also made us. We were created by God and for a specific purpose. Every one of us is special to God. There is no one else on the entire earth who is just like you. You are precious to God. There isn't anyone like you that was born before or that will be born after you. Sometimes you may see someone who looks like you or that you look like. Maybe your mother or your father, your sister, brother, aunt or uncle. Or perhaps someone you've never seen before. But no one is exactly like you. You are uniquely designed by God, which makes you very special. And just as you are very special, so are all the people around you that God has created. Look around you and you'll see all the special people that God created. It doesn't matter if they don't look like you, they don't talk like you, or even act like you. They're made special by God too. Sometimes when you see someone with straight hair, curly hair, light skin, dark skin, skinny, chubby, in a wheelchair, or wearing glasses, you may think they look different than you. And guess what? They probably think you look different than them. But then you remember that we're uniquely designed by God. And all are very special to God. God celebrated our birthday because we were all created in His image. And because we were created in the image of God, we want to be more like Jesus every day. How do we do this? By treating one another with kindness and respect. We can look at one another and say, Happy birthday. Why don't you tell the person that the child next to you, Happy birthday. Happy birthday. God created you and you are so special. Let's have a short word of prayer, okay? I'd like you to repeat after me as we pray, okay? Dear Jesus, thank you for making each of us special. Help us know that you made me special. You also made others special. Teach us to love one another as you love and celebrate our birthday. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. You can go back to your seats now.
John chapter 6, verse 35. And Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. He who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who be eaten shall never thirst. May God bless his word. Thank you, Levi, for the scripture reading. I say good morning and happy Sabbath to all of us. Happy Sabbath. We are all welcome to this congregation of the Lord today. Amen. Today is family life program. Yes. And uh, as we started in the morning with question and answer, trying to discuss and have dialogue on family issues. We were visited by water in this church, and that brought distraction. Like it has been said, we are the children of God are gathered. The devil also comes in. But glory be to God Almighty that has given us victory over distraction. By God's grace, no more distraction in this place today. Amen. And water visited this sanctuary today. I just want to tell you that the living water will visit you. The, visit, the living water will visit your family. Amen. And by God's grace, when we drink of the living water, we will taste no more. Amen. This week is a week of love. It's a week in which the whole world, let me say, is celebrating what we call love, right? Okay. As Seventh-day Adventist Church, Seventh-day Adventist Church has come to realize the importance of this week. And Seventh-day Adventist Church has come up with what we call Family Life Program. And this starts from 10th of February to 17th of February. Last Saturday and this Saturday, I mean to this Saturday. And when you look up onto the screen, we have I'm sorry, give me one second. I don't know what's wrong with this clicker. I'm clicking. Okay. All right. So this week is Family Life Week. And like I said, it started 10th to 17th of February. And we are celebrating what we call Christian Home and Marriage Week. Christian Home and Marriage Week. Where there is time. We are supposed to be meeting every day to discuss about family issues. But because of our busy schedule, because we know that, oh, we might not be able to make it, we have thought it fit that we meet today and have discussion on family matters. And that was why we started in the morning with question and answer. And by God's grace, this time, we also be talking about family matters. And after worship today, we will have a potluck. And after potluck, we will have a seminar. And we will be talking about an important issue that affects every one of us. 
whether you are married or not, whether you are single, whether you are young or old, all of us, we use what we call what? Social media. You use Facebook, you use WhatsApp, you use Instagram, and so on and so forth. So, this you cannot afford to miss. You cannot afford not to be there. Like I said, the title of this message today is the bread that every home needs. The bread that every home needs is the title. And the Bible tells us that for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him will not perish but have everlasting life. Christ has come to this world so that he can show us his love. Christ has died for all of us because he loved us. And I want to tell you, I have not seen anybody that has died for another person before. What type of love are we talking here today? We are talking about agape love. The love that is unconditional. The love that is not infatuation. In the world today, the kind of love that we have, many of the love are infatuation. Dear brothers and sisters, the title again is the bread every marriage and family need today. And the scripture reading is taken from the book of John, chapter 6, verse 35. It says, Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger, and whoever believes in me shall never thirst. I invite you, dear brothers, in standing with Christ today to come to Jesus, to believe in him, to drink of his water, and you will never thirst again. Amen. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, what you see on the screen, you are all familiar with it, right? It's bread. Bread is found in every culture, in every walks of life. When you get to Africa, it's there. You get to Asia, it's there. You get to every part of the country, it's there. And it's what we find in every table, in every family. And it nourishes the body. Dear friend, bread is a staple food prepared from flour, usually wheat and water, commonly baked in an oven. Bread has been an essential part of the diet of many cultures. Today, we are talking about bread and how vital it is to our lives. Nevertheless, we are not talking about just any kind of bread, but about Jesus Christ, Amen. the bread of life. Amen. When you have time, when you get home, you can read this passage, John chapter 6, from verses 24 to 35. It talks better about this topic. Let us pray. Dear Father in heaven, we are very grateful to you for this privilege that you have given to us to be here this morning. Thank you for your mercy over our life. Amen. Thank you for your blessing. Thank you for all that you have done. Father, we commit ourselves into your hand this hour. We realize that we are sinners. We plead that you will have mercy on us. Amen. Father, we invite your presence into this congregation today. We pray that your Holy Spirit will descend upon each and every one of us. Amen. I pray specially for myself. I hide behind, I mean myself behind your cross. Yes. I am empty. I am untrained. I have no word of my own. 
Father, I plead to you today that you speak through me to this congregation. For the sake of your name, I pray that you will only be heard in this place. I will not be heard. I pray that as I decrease, while you increase. Amen. Let your glory be seen in this place today. And let your word bring healing to our family. Amen. Let your words bring transformation unto us. At the end of today's service, we pray that all glories will be ascribed unto your holy name. Thank you, Father, for answering our prayers. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Like I said, this week is a love week. And it is a week in which we celebrate love. We celebrate love. And people exchange all kinds of gifts this week, right? People gave flower, flower, people gave money, people gave love, right? Is there anything bad in giving love? No, there's nothing bad. Because God himself is what? Love. God himself is love. And we have reasons to affirm and reaffirm our love for each other. And in the world today, probably I think that, that should be February 14th, don't get me wrong, as Seventh-day Adventists, we do not have belief in Valentine. Okay? But it happens in the world. And we cannot close our eyes to what is happening in the world. Like I said before, Valentine is a day to celebrate love and affection. And, of course, people do a lot of things. They take themselves out, people exchange gifts, and they give themselves sweet surprises. But one thing is sure is that a Valentine's Day is an occasion for marriage love and also marriage proposal. This week, did we have anybody that got a marriage proposal? It's possible that we got somebody that, that, oh, your daughter, <laughs> congratulations, amen, amen. So very soon, all the roads leads to pastor's house. <laughs> so couples also use this day to declare love and reaffirm their commitment. Brothers and sisters, wives, husbands. We need to reaffirm our commitment for one another. In our marriage relationship, especially for women, they want to hear it, right? Women want to hear that I love you, right? Women want you to bring something sweet for them, a special gift. Am I speaking? All right. <laughs> so let's move forward. This thing is not cooperating today. Okay. But like I said the other time, the word love is something that we should cherish, is something that we should embrace. But one thing that we find in the world today is that there are many infatuation rather than love. Okay? And life can be strange sometimes. Because we choose to live by our feelings. Okay? Because infatuation has to do with your feelings. But God himself is who, Jesus himself is who, is a person, right? Jesus came in human form. Because he loved us. And Instead of focusing on our feelings, we are encouraged 
to focus on the principle of love. Which is what? Patient, kind. We are told that love is not envious, right? Love is not boastful. Love is not arrogant. Love is not rude. Love does not insist on its own way. But in our marriage relationship, in our relationship with one another, do we insist on our own way? And is this not what is causing troubles in many homes today? Are we envious? in our relationship today. And I go further, I say it's, it's not irritable, it's not resentful, does not rejoice at the wrong dreams of others, but instead rejoices in what? In the truth. And the Bible says, what? I am the truth and the light. If anyone comes to me, with that person, right? Why don't we follow the truth? Why don't we bear all things of all things and endures all things? His place says love never ends. Of course, God does not die, right? It's we human beings that we die. So the Bible is complete by saying love never ends. I think I may need help from that place. Okay. In our marriage relationship today, by the way, I need to say that marriage consists of father, mother, and what? And the children. Of course, this may not be in all cases. I mean, you may not have father, there may be some that do not have father, maybe the father is dead or the mother is dead, okay. But one thing is sure is that we have the family, right? We have family. And of course, as we are seated together in the church, we have what? A family. So, and every member of the home has what? Responsibility to one another. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, we come from different backgrounds, we come from different culture, we come from different uh, values, and we are as different as different. Now, the point is, can two agree, I mean, can two work together, except what? I said you agree. Tell me. I come from Africa. You are from Brazil. Our pastor is from Brazil, right? You are from Asia. And so on. You are from the United States. Of course, our backgrounds are totally different. But is there anything stopping us from having a relationship with one another? There's nothing wrong with it in loving one another. Because we are what? One in Christ. And it is interesting today that we believe we share so much in common before getting married. But after marriage, we tend to wonder how we got together. Since we are as different as different. Am I speaking to somebody here today? For those that are looking up to get married, the road is not, is not tough with God in it. Okay? But without God in me, it is tough and tough and tough. But when you invite God into your marriage relationship, when you establish your home on Christ, the solid rock, of course, Christ is the one 
that will keep you moving in your marriage. Christ is the one that will keep you moving in your uh, life. Someone once said that before marriage, opposites attract, right? A man, a boy, and what? A girl, right? Opposites attract. And I will say all kinds of things. I love you. I will die for you. I will do this. I will do that. But after marriage, what happens? What we did not see, we begin to see them. Right? Things that were hidden to us in God's hand. When you are a child of God and you enter into a marriage, the next thing is not for you to get out of it. Because when we lean on the shoulder of Christ, we will keep on going in our marriage. Jesus, the bread from heaven, can bring peace and harmony to every individual. It can bring peace and harmony to every marriage. And it can bring peace and harmony to every home, even your home. We are beloved in the Lord. Today, we'll be looking at Jesus, the bread. Jesus, the personal bread. Jesus, our daily bread. Jesus, the true bread. Jesus, the eternal bread. Every one of us, we know what it means to be angry. That's not a typo. Okay. To be angry means to be bad temper or irritable because of being hungry. Okay, so it's a combination of two things. Anger and hunger. I don't know if you have felt that way before. When you are hungry, <laughs> especially men, when you are hungry and no food to eat, and the woman is trying to get your attention, the woman is trying to talk to you. Are you ready to give the woman 100% attention? An hungry man is an angry man. But when you get fed with something, of course, the energy comes back, right? And all the, the tissues and the chemistry of the body start working together again. Dear brothers and sisters, we are not presenting to you the food of life that you eat. But the food that we are presenting to you today is the bread of life. For the book of John chapter 6 verse 35 says, I am the bread of life, says Jesus. Whoever comes to me shall not hunger again. And whoever believes in me shall not thirst." Friends, it is important for us to know that Jesus is the one who gives life to this world. And Jesus is the one that can satisfy the soul's deepest hunger and thirst. Jesus can change the reality of our family by helping us to manage differences. I just talked about it the other time. We came from different backgrounds. We have differences. When we settle this one today, another one is coming tomorrow. For those that just got married, what you are experiencing in your home is not totally strange. Those that married before you, they have passed through that stage in life. When you first got married, you have expectation. You have that, oh, 
This and that I will get, but you are not getting it. Okay? Maybe it can even be a toothpaste. Okay? The husband put toothpaste here. The wife does not want it that way. The husband comes home, he just rub the clothes, the suit, throw it here, the shoe that way. But the wife wants it organized. And in some cases, it can be the opposite. <laughs> what are you doing? You can't get out of it, right? You are in it. <laughs> But I tell you, as time goes by, you get used to it. And that is where patience comes in. When you invite Jesus into your family, he's going to help you to manage differences of opinion and also bad attitude. Even forgive even the past slight. I'm sorry that that one is, oh, it's showing very well here. And hot, and also make the wrong right. You see, one thing that is key in marriage is being able to forget. Is being able to forgive and forget. You see, when we were having the question and answer, somebody said, no one is perfect, right? If I am not perfect, of course, why should I expect my partner to be perfect? But one thing, or the mistake that we are making, is that we are perfect. I am right. The, my partner is the one that is wrong. But when you realize that you are not perfect. Of course, you will see that the other person is not perfect. And you just need to work together. Work as we journey on this, uh, in, this uh, in this journey of life. And as we work to eternity. Like I said, the book of John class 6 from classes 24 through 36, 35 is the background of this sermon today. And, of course, in the fourth gospel, as we find in the book of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see that Jesus fed how many people? 5,000 men. Okay? With what? How many loaves of bread? Five. And two little fish. And we are told that we also have what the writer said, that probably we have equal number of women, right? And we also have children there, right? By the way, let me say this thing. All that I'm saying in this place, where majority of it is from Adventist family ministry uh, from the general conference. It's coming directly from the general conference. And the directors of the Family Life Ministry, they came up with this material. And uh, of course, that is where this is coming from. So if we are going to give credit to anybody, let's give credit to the Lord Almighty. However, those that came up together to write this too, we need to acknowledge them. So this is coming from them. And, uh, of course, it's a great miracle. Because our God is what? He's a miracle worker. For you to use those five loaves of bread and two fishes to feed 20,000 people, according to this uh, writer. However, let's say it's even just 5,000 men. It's a miracle. Is a miracle. And the same God that is a miracle worker can perform miracle in your home today. As you are thirst and hunger in your home, when you invite him into your home, 
do we be well kept? Do we not be past any man? Oh, we talk about bread, sumptuous bread, right? How sweet. We thank God for the ministry of Pastor Wallace. When he came, he made arrangements, and uh, we used to have bread. We collect bread <laughs> from, okay, and then, okay. And we used to collect bread there. We thank God for your ministry, because many people, they are blessed through that ministry. But we are not talking about, about that bread. We are talking about bread that satisfies the soul. We are talking about eternal bread. We are talking about bread that comes from heaven. And that when you eat this bread, you will, you will be hungry no more. Okay. Say, do not work for the food that perish. That was the work of I mean, the word of Jesus Christ. To the multitude that came to him after he fed the 5,000 and he moved to another location. These people, they came to him to meet him there. And Jesus Christ perceived why they have come. They have come for this food. <laughs> Again. And uh, who, do, who doesn't like free food? Who doesn't like free food? <laughs> I have discovered that people like free food. Free food. You see, when I was in Africa, of course, I didn't know much. But I, until I got to this place, of course I knew that people love food, right? But in America, that people will also love free food. I couldn't comprehend it. Okay? But the point is, when there's food anywhere, people want to get there and eat the food. By the way, we have a hot luck for you today. <laughs> you can join us. Join us. There's free food for you. <laughs> there's free food for you. But this food, they will perish. When these people came to Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ told them that this food will perish, but there is a food, there is a bread that will not perish. And it is a food that will take them to eternal life. The people are curious about this food that endures to eternal life. What is this food? What is this food? Even the manna that fell from heaven when the Israelites, when they were journeying in the wilderness, the food came from heaven, right? Or did it perish? Did it perish? It perished. Okay. Even when God told them, that this food, eat it the same day. Yeah. Except on the Sabbath day. Right. On Friday, keep the one that you will eat on Sabbath. Right. And when they obey, yeah. when they kept it, it did not spoil. Right. But other days, eat, do not keep to the following day. Right. But when those that kept it the, the following day, what happened? <laughs> Obedience is the key. Obedience is the key. Dear friends, we need to obey the word of God. And like I said, this bread of God is nothing less than Jesus himself. This, this kind of bread uh, must be eaten every day. And it's a prayer that we need to seek intentionally. The Bible says, consecrate yourself to God in the morning. Make this your very first work. By the way, how many of us read our Bible every day? How many of us consecrate ourselves 
to God every day. Dear brothers and sisters, we have no other way Amen. than to read our Bible. Amen. We have no other means than to feed on the living bread every day. Amen. We got to embrace the word of God. Yes. Jesus, the true bread from heaven, is here to transform the heart of everybody. Amen. Jesus from heaven is here today. The Holy Spirit is here right now. Amen. And is ready to do the work of transformation in your life. He's ready to do the work of transformation in my life. If only I invite him Amen. to my life. Amen. If only you invite him to your life. If only you invite Jesus Christ to your family. He's going to do a big miracle. Jesus is the standard prayer that keep marriage and family together regardless of how different from each other we might be. We need to have to come to a personal level with God. We need to have a personal encounter with the Lord. You see, if you have experienced God, if you have had a taste of God, you will know that this God that we are talking about is good. Amen. You will know that this God that we are talking about satisfies the soul. Amen. You will know that this God that we are talking about is dependable. Amen. You will know that this God that we are talking about does not fail. Amen. As a personal prayer, Jesus gives us strength to face challenges of personal life. It helps I mean, us to, to, to have victory even in challenges in our marriage and in our relationship. The bread of God who comes from heaven gives life to the world. Of course, like I said, it transforms, it heals, and do so many things for the family and for every one of us. Please come over. Okay, like I said the other time, we do. Point two four zero. The sound system on the screen. Oh, okay. I was pointing. <laughs> okay, okay. You must seek this bread. And like I said, you can just put your hands. And how can you seek this bread? It's by reading the Word of God. Is by prayer. Is by having a recommitment with the Lord. Amen. You see, the book of Jeremiah, chapter 29, verse 13 says, You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. And the book of Matthew, chapter 7, also says, What? Seek and you shall find. This God that we are talking about, Jesus Christ, is the word of God, right? Yes. Hmm? Our God is love, right? Jesus is the word of God. Right. And then we need to embrace this word of God. It says in the book of John, chapter 1, verse 3, and 1 through 3, it says, In the beginning was the word, and the word was with him. And the word was with God. And he was with God in the beginning. Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made. Dear friends, we need to put our life in God's hand. We need to put our family in God's hand. Because it is God that holds this whole world together including our marriage. And our God is our sustainer. He sustains us. Because the Lord gave us what? The bread of life. Right? And that's why we are all living today. Everything has come into being through him, including marriage and family. Now, I talked about 
talk about this all the time. And I just want to emphasize on that uh, more. That feeding on the word of God every day is important. Read the word of God and you do your personal devotion. Right. And also, you do what we call family worship. I don't know how many of you are doing this. But I tell you, if you have not been doing it, it's not too late. You can start today. And you will be surprised what will happen. When you feed on the word of God, when you read the word of God, and when you pray, miracles will happen. Dear brothers and sisters, E.G. White says, in every family there should be what? A fixed time for morning and evening worship. How many of us are doing this? Hmm? But we have people that are doing it. Majority of us might not be doing it. But we have people that are doing it. And I tell you, by God's grace, I am one of, it, of them that do this. Okay? We have a fixed time that we pray in the morning and also pray in the evening. They have beloved in the Lord. One of the greatest fear that we had when we were coming to the U.S. as a family was this, this family worship. But we give glory to God Almighty that made it possible for us to continue in this. Because of the challenges of this world, because of the care of this world, because of the schedule. The husband is there, the wife is here. The children are there. Of course, this may be very, very difficult to do. But I tell you, when there is a will, there will what? A way. When you make up your mind that this thing I'm going to do with the help of God, it's going to become possible. Family worship is something that we need to cherish. It's something that we need to do. And we should have a fixed time for it. And, of course, we are not talking about family worship today. Family worship is a whole topic on its own. But I just want to point our attention to it. That it is very, very important. And how appropriate is it for parents to gather their children together before the fast is broken and even before night? To gather once more before Him and thank Him for the blessing of the day. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, okay, He says, Father, that to partake of the bread of life is to build on the word of Jesus. To build on his teaching. To build on his values. And build on his love. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, if we have the values of God, there will not be problems in our homes today. If we value the things that God values, I tell you, there will be peace in our homes today. But unfortunately, the devil is in this world to do what? To steal, to kill, and to destroy. And that's why we're having all these issues that we are having in this world today. Unfortunately, what the things that are our values today they are not the values of God. Did somebody hear me? What we value today, majority of them are not things that God values. And that's why we are having the terrible things that we are having in the world today. Now, the book of Matthew says, 
Everyone then who hears this word of mine and does them will be like what? A wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the flood came. The rain fell, the flood came. The flood came to this church this morning, right? What happened? Distraction. Okay, now, say, when the rain falls and also the, the, the flood comes, what will happen? The wind blows through and the wind beats on the house. And what happened? The house that is built on Christ the stony throne will not shake. Dear brothers and sisters in the Lord, I invite you to build your home on Christ the stony throne. To build your home on eternal God. When you build on, your home on God, of course, you are secure in this life. Let the Spirit of God dwell in you, dear brothers and sisters in Christ. And when we read the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verse 23, and 22 through 23, what do we find there? We find the fruit, not fruits, is fruit, is a singular. The fruit of the spirit. And of course, we have what? Love, we have joy, we have peace, we have long suffering. And of course, like we started, many of us, we want to be loved. Who doesn't want to be loved here? Hmm? Love is what every human being wants. No one, no, none of us want to be rejected. Right? But who doesn't want peace? We want peace. Do we walk this love out in our relationship? Do we walk towards having peace? And also, one thing is also here, is long suffering, patient. Patient. Many of us we are odd tempered because we live in this flesh, and this flesh controls us. But when we surrender to the Holy Spirit, the flesh in us will die, and the Spirit will live in us. And by God's grace, we'll be more patient, we'll be more kind, and of course, we'll be more faithful, and we will be gentle, and we will have self-control. And this fast ends it by saying what? Against all of these things, what happened? There's no law. There's no law. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, Christ in each heart we bring unity in our home. Let us embrace Christ. Let us invite the Spirit into our life today. He says in the last part, they will be striving together of course, when we have Christ in us, when husband and wife ask Christ in them, they will strive together for the mansion Christ has gone to prepare for those who love him. Yeah, yeah brothers and sisters, do you want to be there? Yeah. Do you want to be in heaven Amen. with your husband, with your wife, Amen. with your children? Amen. Children, do you want to be in heaven with your parents? Yes. We need to walk this way out. They don't just come like that. Brothers and sisters in Christ, it is important for us to believe and do God's way. Believe and do God's way. Because it's possible. Somebody is here today and is saying, what is this man saying? I have heard super sermon than what he's saying here today. However, I surrender to the Lord. I am not saying anything here today. Amen. What you are hearing is what God has for you today. Amen. Only believe in God, Amen. not in me. Amen. Believe in God and he shall be well with you. Amen. Believe in him and your marriage, your home will be better. Amen. God calls us to pray. Prayer for our family is very, very important. And in the Bible, we have children that, that 
were raised up by godly parents. One of them was Samuel, right? Samuel, Samuel the son of Anna, right? Samuel prayed and prayed and prayed to the Lord before she got this child. But right before she got this child, she made up her mind that this child, he will give back to God. And when God answered her prayer, he kept to her promise. And she kept praying for this boy. And when we look at the accounts of Samuel, we see that Samuel did, I mean, Samuel did great for the Lord. Samuel was a judge, and he was a prophet. The wife, I mean, the mother never gave up on praying for him. Dear brothers and sisters, do not give up on praying for your children. Do not give up on praying for your wife. Do not give up on praying for your husband. Pray without ceasing, says uh, the Bible. I'm trying to round up now. Training up our children is very, very important, and we should not fail in this responsibility. You see, when we fail in this responsibility, our children turn to other things, and we are not happy. But I want to tell you that it's not too late today. God can make a change for you. God can make a change for me. And what is important for us as parents is to build up is to build up our children with skill that we prepare them for eternal life. That we prepare them to be independent. And of God, of course, they we know whom they believe when they are adults. And of course, they will know the value of marriage. And they will know how to uh, have a healthy relationship with their spouse. It is important for us to show love to our children. You see, many parents, they manipulate their children, they coerce their children, and that's why some children, they turn again what they have been told or taught in the home. Dear brothers and sisters, we should not indulge our children but we should not also manipulate them. Amen. Children, we should not be disobedient to parents. Amen. We have to be obedient to our parents. Amen. You see, in every home, like I said the other time, church is a family, right? And God is the head of this home, right? God is the one that has authority in this place. And I tell you that also in all gathering, of course, Pastor Wallace is the head of uh, SDA Adventist Church McKinney. And of course, he has to be in control of what goes on in this place. Likewise, the head of every home. Husband, wife, you need to be in control. They are living law in conclusion. Many of us have been snacking on junk food so long. We have been feeding on things that could not satisfy. But we need to invite Jesus into our personal lives today. We need to welcome Jesus into our marriage. We need to say, I surrender to you, Lord. And we tell God to fill up our cup to satisfy our soul with bread that when we eat, we will be, we will not hunger, or we will not be hungry anymore, but rather, we will be satisfied. And I pray that by God's grace, God will make us a better person. God will make me a better husband, and God will make you better husbands and better wives and better children. As we look up, to the heavenly home that we are all pursuing. I want to tell you that we have marriage in this world, but I also invite you to marriage of the Lamb, that all of us 
they are looking up to. And I pray that we will not miss it in Jesus' name. Amen. Happy Sabbath to all of you. Amen. And God bless you.
And we have Jesus Christ, her son, as the head of this family. But Father, this family is made of uh, little families, small groups of family, cells of family. And this family, Lord, are made of father and mother and children and sometimes just, just a husband and wife. Sometimes it's just the wife and the children. Sometimes it's just the father and the children. And sometimes we have just children without the parents. But Lord, we are here before your throne. Because we want to dedicate, consecrate our homes to you. Please, Lord, give us wisdom to follow you in everything that you taught us this morning. Help us, Lord, to obey you in everything. Because when our families are strong, our church will remain strong as well. And we know, Lord, that we live in perilous times. Times when the devil is putting extra effort to attack our families. To break the unity inside our homes. To wipe out the atmosphere of love. The Christ atmosphere from our homes. Yes. Lord, as we learn here today, help us today to establish an altar to the God Almighty of heaven inside our homes. To close, to shut down the windows that the devil is finding access to our homes. Yes. Help us, Lord, to dedicate every area of our lives, our homes our relationships between husband and wife, parents and kids, our finances, our recreation time, even our health and everything, Lord, because we want you to have an altar and a throne inside our houses so we can remain faithful to you and it's strong so when Jesus returns, we can be together as a family, yes. as we will look up to heaven and say, this is our Lord and Savior, we have been waiting for. Amen. And today, Lord, we ask your, your blessings upon us. In the name of Jesus. Amen.